to seek out new life and new civilizations. To boldly go where no man has gone before. Did you ever stop to think to boldly go where no man has gone before? But yet everywhere they went, there were people. I need to get some more coke. You know, I hate watching sci-fi with Bill Brown. I really do. He's right about one thing, though. When you go on an adventure, like I want to invite you on an adventure. I want to invite you on an adventure of faith because our church is boldly going where we've never gone before. In terms of mission, in terms of outreach, we have some amazing things on the horizon. And I want to invite you to go on this bold mission with us. And I want to assure you that there will already be some people there. More importantly, God is already there, just waiting on us to show up. Will you join me? I pray you will. Let's boldly go where we've never gone before.
Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you out on this nice rainy day we're having. We're here to worship the Lord and we won't worry about the rain. It rains on the just and the unjust. Call your attention to our announcements. Uh, Wednesday night dinner and programs are going on. Our Bible studies have started. We're only a week into them. It's a good time to uh, come on in and join us. Uh, Prime timers will be meeting on uh, Tuesday and uh, we have a special opportunity in, in as much on uh, this, this coming Saturday. Uh, what I'm stumbling over is they're gonna prepare 20,000 meals on that day. This is at Heritage Baptist. It's a good time that we can join together in the community and help them with that. Everything will be social distanced and work out where it's uh, safe for all involved, uh, but it's a great, great mission outreach. Uh, then uh, our choir is going to have a December gathering and encourage anybody that would like to sing with them to come and join them if you think you might be wanting to do that or you just want to do it for the Christmas season it would be good administrative council will meet on the 26th and then our church picnic is coming up on October 3rd which is not that far away uh, dinner will start at uh, 5 uh, so just take care of the announcements and read those uh, let us lay those aside and let us turn now and worship with you. May we pray. Oh Lord our God we just thank you for this day you've given us this opportunity you've given us to join together. Oh Holy Spirit settle on us and focus us and fill us and may we be empowered to serve you in all that we're about for it is your church we're a part of Lord and we thank you for it. In the power and glory of your name Lord Jesus we pray. Amen. Our opening hymn is number 92. If you'll take your hymnals and just turn and sing. For the beauty of the earth.
sung of God's glory. Now the important question that can be answered with the Apostles' Creed is Christian. What do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sit at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. joys of a Christian church and a Christian family is to participate together in the sacrament of Christian baptism and we have that privilege today so I'm going to ask Carolyn Virginia Parmenter if she'll come forward and bring her parents with her as she comes Dearly beloved, baptism is an outward and visible sign of the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, through which grace we become partakers of his righteousness and heirs of life eternal. Those receiving this sacrament are thereby marked as Christian disciples and initiated into Christ's holy church. Now our Lord has expressly given to the little children a place among the people of God, whose holy privilege must not be denied them. Remember the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, how he said, Let the children come to me, and do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Al has some questions for you. Beloved, do you in the presence of this child that you present for Holy Communion confess your faith in our Lord Jesus Christ? And the answer is, I do. Do you therefore accept your, as your bounden duty and privilege to live before this child a life that becomes the gospel, to exercise all godly care, that she be brought up in the Christian faith, that she be taught the holy scriptures, and that she learn to give reverent attention upon the private and public worship of God. And will you endeavor to keep this child under your ministry and guidance of the church until she, by the power of God, shall accept for herself the gift of salvation and be confirmed as a full member, responsible member of Christ's holy church. And the answer is, I will. Amen. Water is such a simple and beautiful symbol. We remember that it was through water that Moses led the children of Israel out of slavery. It was through water that the children went into the promised land through the water of the Jordan River. It was through the water of the womb that Jesus came into this world. And it is through water that we use during this time of baptism to convey the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of grace and love to this child. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, pour out your Holy Spirit on this gift of water and she who receives it. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. What name is given this child? Carolyn Virginia Parmenter. <sighs> Carolyn Virginia, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
Amen. Remember your baptism and be grateful. 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 Beloved of the household of faith, I commend to your love and care, Carolyn, whom we this day recognize as a member of the family of God. Will you endeavor so to live that she may grow in the knowledge and love of God the Father through our Savior, Jesus Christ? With God's help, we will so order our lives after the example of Christ that Carolyn, surrounded by steadfast love, may be established in the faith and confirmed and strengthened in the way that leads to life eternal. Amen. And this is her certificate of baptism. God bless you. Thank you all. May God bless you all. I'll ask the ushers of the come forward at this time as we prepare our hearts for the giving of our tithes and offerings.
invite the children, if they'll come forward, uh, for children's time at the altar, if they like, and before you're seated, please uh, welcome each other to church. Just greet one another before you're seated. Everybody. How's everybody today? Good? Yeah, I, I tell you what, it's a good day, isn't it? It's an exciting day. And did anybody watch football yesterday? Or y'all, you did? Yeah, anybody have a favorite football team? Georgia. Georgia. All right. <laughs> anybody got a favorite football team besides Georgia? What's your favorite? What's that? Auburn. All right. <laughs> anybody got a favorite football team? That says orange and blue besides Auburn. <laughs> ah, okay. Well, you know, you know, the football, that's fun when they play on Saturday or Sunday whenever they play. But you know, they do a lot of work before then, don't they? They have to get ready to play. Sometimes we got to get ready to do things, don't we? Like when you get ready to go to school, you got to get ready to go to school. What, what do you need? You have to get washed and dressed. You know, you got to look nice, get your book bag, put your stuff in your book bag, a lot of things to do. You know, God says that when we want to live a Christian life, there's some things we need to do to get ready to go out and do the things God wants us to do. We're going to talk about that some today in the sermon. God says we need to pray. We need to pray. Spend time praying. We need to read our Bibles. That helps. We need to worship like you're doing today. Uh, come to worship. And we need to fellowship with each other. We need to love each other. Take care of each other. And do things for each other. So, you know, sometimes we want to jump right in and just, just go, go, go. But sometimes it's best to stop and prepare and do the things we need to do. All right? Let's pray. Lord, as we go through life, Lord, help us to remember that sometimes we have to prepare for things. And Lord, help us not to be upset about that, but to do what we need to do to be ready for what you call us to do. And especially, Lord, this day, Lord, may we always remember to read our Bibles, to learn, to pray, to come and, and worship at church, and to love and care for one another. And in so doing, Lord, we are doing your will, and we're doing what you want us to do. Lord, thank you for your love and kindness, and for all you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And one thing, I'll give everybody one of these if you want. One thing we need to do is to say thank you to God. And this little bear here says to remember, help remind us to thank God, to say thank you to God for all the blessings that God has given us, okay? So anybody want to get one? You're welcome to get one if you want. Okay. All right. Amen. All right. You go with Miss Hannah or you can go back to your seats with your parents. And I'll invite the congregation. We'll sing again. Uh, the beautiful hymn, we don't sing it very often. Take time to be holy. Speak off with the Lord. Uh, let's stand together as we sing. Take time to be holy.
prayer time will begin with music for reflection as you enter your personal petitions, and then I'll lead us forward. May we pray. We just pray to you and thank you that you are with us. It's hard to, to trust. So much is going on. North Korea, the pandemic in this world, we've been taken advantage of in Afghanistan. Lord, those things that trouble us and concern us. And what are we going to do? Are we going to sit around and worry, or are we going to turn to you and say, Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this earth that you've given us. Thank you for this life that you've given us. Thank you that you are with us, that your love never fails. You are always with us. We can't escape your presence. You know everything about us all the time. You say, follow me, my good and faithful servant. And we say, thank you. And then we stop and reflect and say, how faithful have I been? Lord, forgive us. May we draw closer to you as you draw closer to us. May we realize that in you is truth and life and love forever. That you are the true lover of our soul. And you are our only help. So God, we move forward knowing that everyone in this world is yours. That you love all of us without condition. And you offer inner and all of us wholeness. Wholeness right now. Let us understand that in our weakness you are strong. But we need to be faithful to your call. Lord, we thank you for Cartersville and Bartow County, for Georgia, for the United States of America, for your world. Lord, we pray for the leaders in all of this earth. Lord, we pray that they might humble themselves and seek guidance some of them don't even know who from, but we know it is from you. And we pray that they may understand. Lord, we thank you that we can join together with churches in our community today as we pray for this pandemic. That we pray that you come upon us, that you bring healing, that your healing winds blow through this and bring an end to this COVID pandemic that we are in. Bring healing to those that are sick. Bring comfort to all. Lord, as this goes on all day in this community, may we remember. And whenever we think of it, may we lift this prayer to you that you be with us in every way. Come with power. Come with healing. Come with peace. Come with praise. Lord, we thank you. That we are united by your love. And we should not be divided by our differences. Lead us to be what we ought to be and what we can be. If we but allow ourselves to be filled with your Holy Spirit and your love and your joy and your peace overpower us and we move into the great adventure you have called us to do. May we truly pick up our cross and follow you sharing the good news and ushering in your kingdom one person at a time as we live out your great adventure, the adventure that will never come to an end. And now we turn and we remember when we don't know what to do, we have the prayer that you gave us. And let us now say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Al mentioned it in the prayer, but I wanted to lift up something he said. Uh, today, um, several of the pastors in, in the community, we've been talking and praying and together and just ask that uh, we convey to our congregations to make today a day of prayer for healing for this pandemic. Uh, we feel like there's strength when we pray together for the same thing. And so please be praying that uh, the pandemic will end, that God's Holy Spirit will come and, and bring healing and strength to our community. We feel that there's, uh, there's a lot of validity to that and a lot of value in that. So uh, you may, if you listen to radio stations that are, uh, have, have a uh, live broadcast today, you may hear uh, pastors throughout the day on the radio stations praying as well as we send that out to the, to the airways. But I think that's a, a good thing. So if you have time today uh, in your prayer life, uh, when you say your blessings and your prayers, remember, remember that, please. Our scripture lesson today is Acts 2, 36 through 42. Now, this comes right after the Holy Spirit has fallen, and Peter has gone out and, and preached his great sermon, and the miracle of the, of the tongues has happened, where people have heard uh, Peter preaching, the apostles preaching, each in their own language from, from all over the world, and this is the result of that, of that sermon, part of that sermon, the result of that sermon. Hear God's word, Acts 2, 36. Therefore let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. And when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart, and they said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And the promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words he warned them and he pleaded with them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship and to the breaking of bread and to prayer. This is the word of God for the people of God. Our thanks be to God. If you've been with us uh, during the month of September, you know that we've been talking about how our Christian faith, our Christian journey, being the church is an adventure. It is. It's an adventure. An adventure uh, that we don't know what's going to happen. I mean, I know personally in my life, I, I've gone places I never dreamed I would go. I've done things I never dreamed I, I, I would do. I've, I've gotten to know people I had you know, no expectation of ever getting to know. It's been a great adventure. And so it is for not only our lives, but for all eternity. To be the church, the church that God's called us to be. And we've also been saying how another great adventure in human terms uh, is a space, space exploration. And we've been talking about, about uh, using some space uh, stories as illustrations of how we live out our faith. Well, anytime you go on an adventure, it doesn't always, always go exactly right. Uh, sometimes there are, are missteps and sometimes there are problems, sometimes there are bad problems. April the 11th in 1970, three men set off on an adventure. They call that Apollo 13. They were going to be the third man crew to walk on the, on the face of the earth, on the face of the moon. If you remember, you, you may not have been around back then, but, but th there were really two ships that went to the moon. There was a, a main module, if you will. That's where the, all three of the astronauts would, would ride to the moon and back. And then if you remember, there was a, another, a lunar lander, a, a, a landing module, a lunar module. It would separate from, from the main module. It actually would go down to the moon, and then part of it would come back up and, and connect again with the main module. That's how, they, that's how they did it in the Apollo program. Well, on, on this day, they had not started very long, a little over two days into the flight, when they contacted NASA with these famous words, and you know them, Houston. We have a problem. Now that was something of an understatement. What they had was an explosion. Exposed wires somehow had set off a, a small explosion that, that destroyed one oxygen tank and, and damaged a second oxygen tank. 
Now, here's what most people didn't realize. They had enough oxygen to breathe. That wasn't the problem. The oxygen was part of their fuel. And as being part of their fuel, it was also part of their uh, uh, navigation uh, steering, you know, how they control, control the, the, the ship. And so they were in real trouble. They had enough oxygen to breathe, but they didn't have enough oxygen to complete their mission and get home. So together with NASA, they came up with a plan, and you probably saw the movie, you remember it. They, they decided they would all, get, all three of them would get in that small lunar uh, uh, module, and, and they would, would, would ride in, in it. And they would save the oxygen in the command module, in the main module, so when they got back, they could use that, navigate that, and get home safely. But you remember the problem. The problem was that that lunar lander was equipped with, 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 with enough oxygen for, for uh, two men for two hours, for two days, not three men for four days. And again, it wasn't the oxygen at that point. It was the CO2. And, and basically, they were going to suffocate. And they had uh, scrubbers, they had ways of, of cleaning that, but again, it wasn't adequate. And so they had to figure out a way to get it uh, working. And they came up with a, a Jimmy Rig contraction that, that would work, that filtered, that scrubbed the, the oxygen. They made it out of cardboard they had on board and plastic bags and parts from, from their spacesuits that they weren't going to, to need. And of course, that one thing that you should never go anywhere, even out of space, without duct tape, you know, <laughs> duct tape. The crew followed NASA's instructions and they made it home safely. It was remarkable. Apollo 13 was thousands of miles away from home. The crew was in a hostile and unforgiving atmosphere, but they survived. They survived for two reasons. Number one, they were well trained. They were well prepared in every way possible. And they survived because they asked for help from mission control and they listened. Thus they overcame the impossible and they survived where ordinarily they would have died. Kind of brings me to my text this morning. Acts 2 tells about the dynamic launching of Christ's church, of the Christian church. We think of Pentecost as being the birthday of the church. And those 3,000 disciples that came to faith at Pentecost were the beginning of the Christian church. 3,000 people were baptized into Christ's church that day and they began an adventure of a lifetime. But not long into that journey, just a few years into that journey, problems came up. All kind of problems, including persecution and cruelty. The apostle James was executed. Peter was jailed. Philip was stoned to death. A number of believers were arrested and sometimes killed for their faith. Such conflict and persecution would have destroyed any sort of a fledging movement. But this wasn't a fledging movement. This was the church of Jesus Christ. And the church not only survived, but it thrived. In his letter to the Colossians, Paul wrote these, these words. All over the world now, the gospel is bearing fruit and growing, just as it has been doing among you since the first day you heard it and understood God's grace and all its truth. The church was not only th uh, uh, surviving, but thriving and growing all over the world. So much so that folks were kind of scared when the Christians came to town. In fact, later on in Acts, we read where one fellow, when the Christians came, told his friend, he says, these fellows who have turned in the world upside down have come here. Uh-oh. The church grew, and as it grew, it bore fruit, and it turned the world upside down. Why were they able to do that? Because from the very beginning, they too had been trained. They too had been skilled in the and the basics, they practice the basics of the faith. What is that? Well, we've read it this morning. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings, to fellowship, the breaking of the bread, and to prayers. Now, there are a lot of other things, of course. But I want to talk about those four things this morning. Let me unpack that just, just a little bit in the time we have left. The first thing the early church did to become the vibrant church it was is to study the teaching of the apostles. The apostles. The apostles were those who had been with Jesus. That's what made them apostles. They would, had been with Jesus. They talked with Jesus and, and watched Jesus and listened to Jesus and learned from Jesus. You know, they, we talk about them, Peter, James, John, uh, those guys, the first 12. See, see when they got together, they, it was their job to, to teach 
as the church began to, to, to grow. Today, we would say that would be like reading scripture, particularly the New Testament, particularly the words of, of Christ. Those were the, the fruits of the apostles as they, they wrote those things and, and, and remembered those things. The church was committed to that. There are other things the church had to do. In fact, you remember this one incident is recorded in Acts? When the church was, was taking care of the people, particularly the widows and the orphans, and they would come and there was one group of widows who, who said, you know, we're not really getting our fair share. You know, other people are getting more food and, and we're hungry and our children are, are hungry and the church isn't treating us quite right. And they went to the apostles and they complained, you know. And, and the church is like, well, what are you going to do, apostles? And they, they got together and they, they prayed and they, they thought about it and talk, talked about it. And they said, you know, here's the thing. This is a worthy ministry feeding these widows and, and orphans. But y'all going to have to work this out. It's our job. It's the apostle's job to teach. To teach. And nothing must distract us from that mission. Others have to step up and do these other ministries because we've got to do what God has called us to do. And that's why the church puts so much value on knowing the scriptures today. Because the written words of scripture are the only place that you and I can hear the, the teaching of the apostles. So that we can know God's will. So that we can learn about Jesus. So we can understand how to live our lives to please God. That's why we, we want to go to Sunday school and, and Bible studies and, and do preaching and, and worship on Sunday. That was one thing. The other thing... A healthy church, a, a thriving church, was a fellowship. Fellowship. Fellowship is being together. It's communing together. The Greek word is koinonia. It's caring for each other and loving each other and taking care of each other and just being a family, the family of God. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. Showing up and being together. I remember a show called Mama's Family. What a silly show that was. Uh, Vicki Lawrence, I think, was, was head of Kevin. He came out of the Carol Burnett show years ago. Uh, her son, Vinton, one time didn't want to go to church. And, and he said, Mom, I don't want to go to church. He said, you know, you don't have to go to church in order to go to heaven. And Mama had, always had great retorts. She said, yes, that's true. She said, but you don't have to have a parachute to jump out of an airplane. But it certainly helps. It certainly helps. <laughs> Well, it, 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 it does. I mean, it does. You don't have to go to church to get to heaven, but it certainly helps. And by the way, going to church and fellowshipping, fellowshipping, and not just coming here. I, I mean, you can do it in homes. You can, you can do it in a park. You can do it in the middle of a cornfield. Uh, it, it, it's not the, the building. We're, we're talking about loving each other and taking care of each other. We need each other. We need to help each other and support each other. And sadly, we don't always do a good job of that. We don't. We're not perfect. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. Sometimes there are people among us who, who need help. They, they need encouragement. They need support. They might need material. Th and and, we, and we, we fall short. None of us are, are perfect. But we've got to try. Because that's what this adventure is all about. Are you, are you willing to go on this adventure? Are you willing to try? I mean, even when other people aren't doing what you think they ought to do, are you willing to do it? Are you willing to be God's man, God's woman in this place? I mean, when you see a need, and I preach this my whole life because I've seen it over and over and over again. Sometimes you see a need. You say, somebody ought to take care of that. Somebody ought to call the shut-ins in our church every week and and check on them, make sure they're okay. And that becomes a, a passion. I've seen that become a passion with some people. And sometimes that passion leads them to bug other people to do it. But, 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 but sometimes that passion leads them to do it. To do it. To pick up the telephone and do it themselves. Sometimes God puts a burden on your heart because that's exactly what God is calling you to do. To be God's man, to be God's woman in this place. And to be about fellowshipping and helping others. The third thing that the early church did was, was worship. Worship. In our scripture it talked about breaking of the bread. But that was more than just eating together. That was a sacramental thing. More like communion. Which is an act of worship. We talk about the importance of fellowship. But if we don't center our fellowship on Christ. I mean getting together is wonderful and, and fine. And, 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 but there has to be a time when we get together to lift our praises. To acknowledge God. To listen to what God might be saying.
for us. I cannot overestimate or overemphasize the importance of worship and the adventure of living a life of faith. I know Isaac Watts understood it. You know the name Isaac Watts? Most of you probably do. Isaac Watts wrote about 50 books. Uh, about 30 of them were on theology. But what most people know him for was he wrote about 700 hymns. There's some in the hymn book in the pew in front of you and in the Cokesbury and just about every hymnal there is. There's some Isaac Watts hymns. But what makes me truly think he understood the importance of worship and praise is the way he died. You know, when he died, he, 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 some of his last words were, were a verse that he wrote himself, one of his hymns. Listen to what he said. These were some of his last words. I'll praise my maker while I've breath. And when my voice is lost in death, praise shall employ my nobler power. My days of praise shall never be passed while life and thought and being last or immortality endures. He was saying, he said, as long as I have breath, as long as I have thought, as long as I have life, I'm going to praise God. I'm going to worship God. And you know what? Even when my breath and my thought and my life is gone, I'm still going to praise God. Because I'm going to praise God in eternity, in heaven, for all time. There's a little praise chorus that we sing sometimes in contemporary worship. It's called um, the Heart of uh, Worship. And, and there's a little line in there that said, Lord, forgive me, Lord, for the things I've made it. Forgive me, Lord, for the things I've made it. You know, I hope as we go on this adventure, continue on our adventure of faith, we'll, we can let go, yes, let go of some of the things we've made worship. Some of the ideas we have about worship. We need to let go of, of, the, uh, of our intellectual ideal that, that worship it's, 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 it's just a sermon or a lecture. We need to let go of our evangelistic notion of worship. The fact that, that worship is just directed toward, toward get somebody to, to repent and, and walk the aisle and receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior. As vital and important as that is, worship is even more. We need to let go of our entertainment expectation and remind ourselves that we don't go to church to watch a Christian show. You gather and, and worship, whether it's in a cathedral or, or in the sanctuary or, or with your family or, or by yourself on a, on a beach somewhere. We come together and worship to be met by God the Almighty. By God the creator of the universe, the one who sustains us and redeems us and saves us. The Lord and King who's present through proclamation and remembrance. Worship reminds us that he wants to be with us, to penetrate our inner self, to take up residence inside of us. And as we go through the experience of meeting with him in this mystical moment of, of worship, we need to respond. How do we respond? Well, sometimes we respond in song. Sometimes we respond in prayers. Sometimes we respond with a creed. Sometimes we respond in service. But no matter how we respond, may it not just be some rote thing that we do because we're supposed to do. But may our response be to the living and active presence of a loving and merciful God who has touched our innermost being with the power of his Holy Spirit. And lastly, the church thrived because it practiced vibrant prayers. We told the story of Apollo 13. And when trouble came, what did they do? They reached out and they said, Houston, we have a problem. I suspect maybe they could have turned off some things and tried to fix it themselves, but they would have died. They couldn't handle it on their own. They needed a power from outside their little world. They needed some wisdom outside their own experience to reach in and to help them, and that's what prayer is for us. It's the realization that we as Christians need a power from outside to to help us and to bless us. God's called us on a great adventure. But it's an adventure we need some help with. And it's an adventure we need to train for. We need the apostolic teachings. We need to read God's word. We need one another to get us through. We need to worship. And my, 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 how we need to pray. Would you join me as we pray right now? 
Almighty God, as we continue on this adventure of faith, Lord, help us. Help us to be in your word, to study, to learn, to remind ourselves of who you are and what you want from us and how we are to live our lives to please you. Lord, help us to fellowship with one another, to care about one another. Lord, there are people in our congregation, there are people in our community who, well, they just need, some just need a word of encouragement. They're, they're lonely, they're, they're afraid. They just need someone to say, it's going to be okay. Call me if you need anything to know that they're not alone. Lord, we need to worship. Lord, help us to worship, whether we can come to a church, whether we do it online, whether we do it in small groups, but Lord, may we worship, truly worship. May we experience that transcendent touch from your Holy Spirit. And then, Lord, may we make our lives a, a life of prayer. Lord, Paul says, pray without ceasing. And may that be the way we pray, Lord, knowing that you are our Lord and our Savior, and we need that connection to you each and every day. Oh, Lord, make it happen to we who are gathered in this place your children. In the name of our Father, our, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. As we close our time together, I invite you to join one more time uh, in song. Wonderful words of life is a great hymn to remind us of the uh, Holy Scripture. Uh, the, as always, the altar is open. If anyone would like to come or share a decision you've made, I invite you to come. Number 600, let's stand together as we say. church go forward from this place to live out your adventure go forward from this place and be God's men and God's women in all that you do and go forth and be blessed be blessed by God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit amen go in the joy of Christ